Hi, this is Kevin Bass from TheDietWars.com. I'm a medical student and PhD student about to finish my PhD and finish my last two years of my medical degree. I've been in this dual degree program for what seems like my entire life. And uh, I work on ketogenesis and ketogenic physiology as well as uh, colitis and the protective benefits of ketogenesis on colitis, like Crohn's disease, all sort of colitis. And I have a passion for misinformation, namely for debunking misinformation, hopefully not spreading it. I've been doing that for the past uh, five, seven years forever as well. Um, <laughs> if you go back all the way to like seven years, I've been spreading more of it. If you go back closer to five or four, last four or five years, I've definitely been focused on debunking it. I once actually believed in a lot of the things that I uh, debunk. Uh, most of the things actually I debunk I once believed in. And so, uh, yeah, that's my typical spiel. However, today I'm going to be talking to you guys about a hack that you can do to improve your health, to reduce your risk of death by, in this particular study, more than 10%. Um, there are some caveats to that, but this is a very easy and perhaps even a tasty way to uh, improve your health uh, in the long term and do for the rest of your life. And this is something that I do. So this article is called The Effect of Salt Substitution on Cardiovascular Events and Death. And it's in the New England Journal of Medicine. It was published late last year. <clears throat> in this article, they showed that a use of a salt substitute containing 75% sodium, sodium chloride, that's what norm, salt normally is, and 25% potassium chloride that's not really normally in salt, but you're basically substituting 25% of normal salt with potassium chloride to come up with a mixture of mostly normal table salt, sodium chloride, and some potassium chloride. This use of this salt, salt substitute by adults reduced the rate of stroke, major cardiovascular events, and death by 10 to 15% over just five years. So uh, for just five years, you know, you, you reduced your risk of dying by, by like 10 or 15 percent. If you simply salted your freaking food at home with this, with this uh, mixture instead of using normal table salt, it's that easy. It's that straightforward um, in this particular study. And we're going to get to the caveats, but this is really this is a really exciting study. One of the big reasons it's so exciting, though, is that it had 21,000 participants, and they were separated into two groups. One was given the salt substitute, and one was not. Um, okay, the inclusion criteria are important. The inclusion criteria are such that uh, they either had to have a history of stroke, or a history of uncontrolled hypertension and be older than 60 years old. One of those two. Which means that they had to be at particular risk of having a stroke or having some sort of hypertension related uh, disease or, or, or cause of death. Usually cardiovascular disease. That's what hypertension is the cause. That's, that's to say high blood pressure. Hypertension is the same as high blood pressure. People who have hypertension have a high risk of cardiovascular disease because of the stress on the blood vessels. And so the people in this study were people at a greater risk of stress on the blood vessels due to higher blood pressure or simply greater risk of stroke uh, due to high blood pressure and other factors. So they were particularly prone or particularly predisposed to benefit from an intervention that might modulate or decrease their blood pressure or decrease the risk of cardiovascular disease because they already had pre-existing cardiovascular disease or high blood pressure. I hope that makes sense. What that means is, is that people who may not have these risk factors, people who simply are, say, even healthy and uh, are using this particular mixture may not see the magnitude of benefit they saw in the study. However, however, be that as it may, it's almost certain that if you apply this at a population level, you apply this to everybody, and even people without pre-existing cardiovascular disease, you would still see a benefit. This is my belief, and I, I'm almost certain that this is the case, and uh, to the degree that, that I personally use this intervention myself. It's a, it's a really good idea. 
let's look at some of the graphs. So the stroke, as you guys can see, the cumulative incidence of stroke over time, the regular assault group had about a, a, a two or three per percent more greater chance of having a stroke. The assault substitute group, same thing with the cumulative incidence of major, major adverse cardiovascular events, two or three percent increase in the regular assault versus assault substitute. Death from any cause, two to three percent greater. And that's because, of course, if you reduce all cardiovascular events, then you're also going to reduce death from all causes. Hyperkalemia, not, not a substantial difference between the two. Okay? Not a statistically significant difference. Almost exactly the same. As you guys can see here, the, the graphs are diverging. As you guys can see here, it's not so much. Although right at the end, you see some slight divergence. And then it almost looks like it's going back together again. Earlier, you know, you could see some divergence, but the salt substitutes seem to have a lower incidence of hyperkalemia. So there's not a statistically significant effect. Whereas if you look at the other, um, you know, cumulative incidents, you see divergence in the two graphs immediately. You see it immediately. And less so here. Okay, so there's no incidence of hyperkalemia, but there are these benefits, and death from all causes is dramatically improved. Um, as I said, the people uh, who were included in this study had a, had some risk factors. <clears throat> so how 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 do you get this particular mixture? It's very easy. Take more than light. So there's a light salt that Morton has that's 50% potassium chloride. Mix that half and half. So you can use a gram scale at home. Or you can simply mix the uh, containers. So if you have like an equal volume of each, an equal weight container, you simply open each container and mix them both together. You take the Morton light, you take the regular Morton salt, and mix them together. And then voila, you have a 75% potassium chloride, 25% um, sorry, 75% sodium chloride, 25% potassium chloride mixture. Um, the reason that you have to actually make, make your own is because these aren't available on the market in the United States. For whatever reason, it's a dumb thing. What they have in the United States is they have pure potassium chloride salts, or they sometimes have, in the case of Morton Light, it's a 50% potassium chloride, 50% sodium chloride salt. Why is this, though? Like, why is it that they don't have, uh, well, why is it that they mix 50 and 50? Well, the reason is just because potassium chloride doesn't taste quite like sodium chloride. People are used to sodium chloride salts. They don't want to eat, take potassium chloride salts because it tastes a little strange. So they have a 50-50 mixture. The thing, though, the, the problem with that is that a 50-50 mixture still tastes a little bit different from table salt. A 75-25% mixture, actually, if you look at the randomized control trial data, there's a 2016 uh, study published in clinical hypertension. You look at the data here, and in fact, uh, let's look at the figure, because the figure here is a beautiful part. If you look at the figure, uh, you can see that up to 30% sodium chloride, uh, more people were favoring the sodium chloride than the, uh, the like more people were favoring this mixture than they were favoring um, like salt, salt mixture. So what that means is that up to about 30% people still favor potassium chloride containing mixtures, but it's not in this particular table. In other studies, they showed that people didn't like it so much when you got up to about 50%. So what this means is, is you might want to stay low around 25%, although you can also try the 50% potassium chloride. That wasn't shown in this study, but but actually trying the 25% potassium chloride, you might prefer it to the completely sodium chloride normal salt. You might actually prefer this, this healthy mixture. It actually has taste properties that are superior, according to this study, compared to normal table salt. So it's a win-win all around. Beautiful. Um, yeah, but the last caveat is if you have a history of kidney disease, or on blood pressure lowering medications, consult your physician before starting to use 25% potassium chloride. Otherwise, go get get at it, use it. Uh, the more people who use it, literally, if a lot of you guys start to use it, I know that I'm saving saving some lives here. So use it, help me save lives, save your own life in the long term. And the longer you do this, the longer you consume it this way, 
this is just five year study. If you do over the course of 25, 50 years, you're going to substantially affect your risk and improve it. And, and since hypertension is associated with cognitive decline, by reducing your hypertension like in a subtle way over the course of your entire life, you're probably going to see better cognition later in life as well. That would be the theoretical speculative thing. Of course, it's not been tested in this study, and that's very hard to test because that's like a 50 year trial. Uh, it's probably not ever going to get tested. But if I had to guess, in my personal belief, based on the data around hypertension that we know, if you're going to modestly improve your, your hypertension, say from 130 systolic to 125, and you do that over the course of your entire 50 years period, you're going to see an improvement in your cognition, a, a, a reduced decline in your uh, uh, brain function. So do it. This is one of the best life hacks you can use to improve your health in the long term, and you can just do it this for the rest of your life. And uh, enjoy. Enjoy doing it as well. If you like this video, if you like the podcast, please share it. Let people know the good news about potassium chloride enriched salt. Uh, share me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Please tag me at Kevin in Basque, V I N N B A S S. That's where I am on these platforms. Check out my Patreon if you want to talk to me about once a month about any issue of your choosing related to the things that I tend to talk about in these videos in my blog. Please, uh, Sign up as a top tier patron and we can go get on the phone and talk about that. If you want to sign up as a bottom tier patron, I can still talk to you about your different questions. It's not going to, um, um, I'm going to pro tend to prioritize people who are patrons. Of course, I try to respond to everybody, but I can't always do so. But if you are a patron, I can tend to uh, prioritize you. That said, um, if you do, Send a message to me as a patron. Please send a message to me on Instagram or, or Twitter because that way it's easier for me to track everything. For whatever reason, I just don't like going on to Patreon. I have this like pressure. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but send me a message on Twitter or Instagram. Cool. Uh, check out my website, thedatwars.com. Thatwars.com slash wars slash support dash me. That's a way to donate and, and help me out. And also check out my podcast at The Kevin Bass Show, and that's on all major directories. Please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. If you leave a review on Apple Podcasts, that will be helpful for me. It will help to increase the algorithm, help to increase the visibility of this podcast. Check me out on the on um, YouTube because that's where you can see me talk about the different studies that I t talk about on this podcast. If you are listening on the podcast and you want to see the actual figures and graphs that I'm talking about, that's a great way to do it. And leave feedback, positive or negative. The more feedback I get, positive or negative, the more I know what to do, do with this whole podcasting stuff. Because we just had like a, a drink, so I'm like burping a little bit. Because um, uh, I'm always developing and always learning. So give me your feedback. Tell me what you think I could do better because that would be awesome to learn. I need to know and learn from you guys about that. Hope this was helpful. Hope this was interesting. Try it out. Try it out for the rest of your life. Tell me what you think about it. Send me a message. Send me a text. Drop a comment. Share the video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.